Comic books are baloney, in all honesty. Like, obviously I love them, and a lot of you love them too, I'm sure. There are iconic characters that we, as an audience, get drawn to or find ourselves relating to on a genuine emotional level. That's how it was in the beginning, too. You'd find a comic starring Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, whoever, and they'd become your favorite thing. Then, as the medium began to progress, they were explained to be sharing a world together, and it just kept getting more and more complicated. Eventually, that expanded into something that, altogether, is both fascinating and terrible at the same time. So, to the newbies, welcome, and to the oldies, welcome back. Let's talk about the DC Multiverse. Sticking with my intended idea of these videos serving as a sort of guide to DC, I'm going to start this thing with broad strokes and work my way into the more detailed bits as we move further along. So from the top, for those not in the know, what the heck is a multiverse? And what does that have to do with Batman? Well, we've seen plenty of interpretations of the idea in media, especially lately. If not in comics, you might have seen the theory utilized in Into the Spider-Verse, Futurama, and maybe most popularly in Rick and Morty. Basically, boiled down to its core, whenever a decision is made, or an alternative result of a particular action or inaction has a potential of occurring, a new reality is created in which that thing did happen. So say you make a decision between wearing your red or your blue sweater today, and you eventually land on red. Well now there's a new universe where you chose blue instead. It can be a bit of a mind boggle if you think about it too hard, but writers and artists basically took the idea and ran with it. So with DC, we'd sometimes get these little stories outside of the main universe where something unusual happens. Things like what if Superman landed in Soviet Russia instead of Kansas? Or what if Lex Luthor finally got the upper hand and ended Superman's life after taking the time to earn his trust? These became viewed as alternative universes, sometimes called Elseworld stories. So those are the broad strokes. Main continuity, a bajillion Elseworlds continuities. I wish it was that easy. I really, really do. See, the primary continuity changes so frequently that it's actually had even further implications to how DC's entire multiverse functions. DC was kind of just existing on its own, but as a business eventually got a hold of some other characters from their competitors as they dissolved. Charlton, Fox Features, Fawcett Comics, Wildstorm, it's nuts, man. So periodically there would be some event or another that would reveal these separate continuities to be separate universes as well. But then they'd also later combine them into a single universe. All in all, there have been eight different iterations of the DC multiverse, and that makes it unexplainably difficult to parse through. But let's try to break it down at least a little. So, it's the 1940s, and we've got the prime continuity of the comics, Earth 2. This is where we find Superman, Batman, etc. in anything up until around late 1956. I'll explain that end date in a moment. Skimming over to Earth 4 is Charlton Comics, so Blue Beetle, Peacemaker, The Question, and a handful of others. Next, throwing our nice and tidy numbering system away, is Earth Quality. Not Earth Q, since that's already taken. Earth Quality is where Quality Comics takes place. So here you'd find characters like Plastic Man, The Phantom Lady, Human Bomb, and more. Moving into a slightly better Earth name is Earth S. This one is Fawcett Comics, so the Shazam family. So, alright, four distanced, distinct realities. Maybe not that difficult to explain when they get mushed together, but let's talk about Earth-1. Now it's 1956, and continuity-wise, nothing you've read counts for anything anymore. 
Every narrative you've bothered to glance at takes place on Earth 2, and all the pretty new books are in Earth 1. Earth 1 has a new Flash, Green Lantern, and has new origins for Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Eventually, they acknowledge Earth 2 and start to interact about once per year. Fast forward again, and it's 1986. The multiverse is vast because of a bunch of weird stories where Superman's a huge jerk and Batman has a son, or whatever the writers feel like. Then, it's time for Crisis on Infinite Earths. I won't go into the nitty gritty of it, that'll be something we cover in detail separately another time, but basically this is the moment that defines pre-crisis and post-crisis continuity, if you've ever heard somebody bring that up. Once the crisis ends, all those Earths I've mentioned get rolled up into one reality, New Earth. Everybody gets a late 80s reboot, and we can all move on with our lives. Until 2011. Okay, so this guy named Dan DiDio takes over DC and immediately wants to make his mark, even if that's in the shape of a questionable brown stain. So they take a Flash time travel storyline and stretch it into a multiverse warping event that results in the main timeline rebooting again, plus the entire multiverse getting slimmed down to 52 worlds. We call this one Prime Earth. What happened to the rest of the realities? No, seriously, what happened to the rest? Dan leaves in moderate disgrace, and while not everything from the reboot was bad, the new people in charge basically set about going into damage control mode and setting things back into place. More crises, crises happen, and it basically gets boiled to everything being canon at once. Essentially, everyone remembers each timeline now, regardless of the reboots. All the heroes who got erased from the new timelines are back and everything, despite sounding like it should be a mess, has actually become the cleanest it's been in a long time. Well, what about the multiverse? Well, with the recent event this past year, Dark Crisis, the multiverse has seemingly been restored to its full potential. Don't get me wrong, the numbering system is an absolute wreck, and you couldn't pay me to explain that in detail. But it's all there. Gaslight Batman, Soviet Superman, every bit of it matters. Even if it's only a little bit. Now, summarizing it for anyone I may have lost somewhere in the middle, 1938 to 1956 is Earth 2, 1956 to 1986 is Earth 1, 1986 to 2011 is New Earth, 2011 to 2021 is Prime Earth, and 2021 onwards is still Prime Earth, but everyone also remembers the old universes. I hope that clears things up for everybody. It's still a mess, I'll acknowledge that, but it's a fun mess, for sure. So, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you liked me, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.